We're looking at the Canon T3i, which is a DSLR, digital single lens reflex camera. It can be used for both still photography and for video. In this video, we're going to look at focus and controlling the lens. If we come over to this side, we can see that there are a couple things that we can change, a couple switches. We can change it to autofocus or manual focus, so we can have the camera control it or we can do it all ourselves. We will look at both of those. The stabilizer uh, helps with camera jiggle and shake. It's very useful, so most of the time you will like to have it on unless you are recording sound with video and then sometimes the microphone picks up the noise of the stabilizer, so, so you should be aware of that. There are two rings that can be adjusted. Uh, the focus ring can only be adjusted if we have it on manual focus. So we'll make sure it's on manual. And we can see that when we are adjusting the lens manually, we are adjusting this ring here. This other ring, the larger ring, adjusts the focal length. And as we go from uh, uh, 18 millimeters to 55 millimeters, the camera will zoom in and we'll see less of what's in front of us. So that will change the focal length and this will change the focus. We'll have it on manual at first and we'll move it back around. So uh, if we remember from the last video, if we go to live view, we can see what the camera is seeing along with seeing our basic exposure settings underneath. I'm going to put something in front of the camera here. I'll put a Rubik's cube so that we can see what we're focusing on. So for manual focus, really all I am going to do is move this ring back and forth and you can see I can go out of focus to in focus. It is a little difficult to see on that small screen and one of the nice things about the T3i is that we can digitally pop in closer to the middle of the, the frame and make sure that it's precisely focused. So over here we have two buttons and this button right here has sort of a little magnifying glass symbol. And if we pop in once, you can see how it got much bigger. And if we pop in again, it gets even bigger. Now I can precisely focus on my Rubik's Cube. So it helps us. We have sort of a focus assist right here that will digitally pop in and out. It's not actually changing the image. It's just showing us what's inside there and show it so we can focus more precisely. In general, if we're going to be photographing a person and we really want to make sure they're in focus, we will do that and pop in to their eyes and make sure their eyes are crisp and in focus. All right. So that is oops for for using the manual focus. If we change it back to put it on autofocus and we swing back around here. Then when we press down our trigger halfway, it will, you can sort of hear, it goes it will focus for us and it will focus in the middle. So I wanna sort of, if I want a different part in focus, I wanna make sure to focus that way. All right, so I need to hold down halfway to allow the camera to focus. So in that sense, I can get whatever my main element is in focus. But there are other things that affect, a fo affect focus. In the last video, we looked at the things that affect exposure, and f-stop was one of those that affects exposure. The other are shutter speed and ISO. The f-stop also affects uh, what is in focus and how much of the image is in focus. And that's what we call depth of field. So if we, we can move that out of the way for the moment. Uh, if we want to look at some images that are already on the camera, we can pop in here. And we have two images here. One uh, that is at f32 where everything is in focus and another one not that one at 5.6 and we can see the chair and the fence are no longer in focus so when the f stop is opened up 
like 5.6, we will have more narrow depth of field than if we are closed all the way down, we will have a lot of depth of field, right? So with these images, we can see that we had to change the f-stop to change the depth of field, right? But that's not the only thing that changed. If we went from 5.6 to f32 without making any other adjustments, we would not have a properly exposed image, right? And if we look over here, it also shows us the shutter speed. So when it was 5.6, our shutter speed was actually very, very fast, 1 3200th of a second, as opposed to when it was at f32, it was 1 100th of a second. So when we were closed down to f32, we had to make the shutter speed slower to let in more light. When we were opened up and letting in a lot of light, we had to close down the shutter speed and make it faster. Make the shutter speed faster so that was much less light. This is called reciprocity, which is how with, when we have multiple controls for the exposure, f-stop, shutter speed, and ISO, we can alter the image that we get and how much is in focus, whether we have narrow depth of field or deep depth of field by changing our other controls. So we can change shutter speed and ISO to compensate for the changes we need to make for, with the f-stop. There are two other things that also affect depth of field, the focus point and the focal length. So if we come back here, right, that we, we can see our focal length, the wider the focal length or shorter, right, with a smaller number is going to give us more in focus. As we zoom in, we will have less available depth of field. So that's the other th one of the other two. The other thing is that focus point. When we chose where we were going to focus, on, on our Rubik's Cube, if I change where I focus, whether I focus, focus at the back of the Rubik's Cube or the front of the Rubik's Cube or farther away, as I shift that focus point, I also adjust what part of the image is in focus. So when I'm dealing with depth of field, I can be adjusting my f-stop, my focal length, and also my focus point to get the focus exactly where I want. I adjust the focus point to get the depth of field in the area of the image I want, and then I can adjust the f-stop to either give myself more or less available depth of field. And although it does take a while to get the hang of manipulating the depth of field and getting the focus the way you want it to, if you take your time and make adjustments to the f-stop and then compensate with the shutter speed, you'll get it pretty quickly.